Today I'm going to show you a pair of boots that I just finished and tell you a little bit about my ordering process. Before you start making assumptions, these boots are for a man. He's a doctor in Pennsylvania. I always tell my clients that there are no gender lines in cowboy boots. Anyone can have any design or color scheme that they want. If my male clients are a little uncertain about that, I tell them as long as they're secure in their masculinity, they can have any boot they desire. And this guy decided to test that theory to the limit. During the time I was making these boots, I was a little uncertain about them because they're just so crazy. But once I got them finished, I really do like these boots. Maybe I'll have to make a pair for myself. Surely we won't accidentally run into each other somewhere while we're wearing the same pair of boots. That would be totally embarrassing. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about how I use my portfolio. When I go to shows, I have a photo album of boots. Now my primary rule for this photo album is I never put a boot in it that I hate because people order out of this book and so if there's a boot I really hate making I don't want it in this book so that they can see it and order it. I put designs here that I like and that I want to make again. One thing that I stress to people as they're looking through this book is to remember that they're looking at two things. With every single design there are two things going on, and that is design and color scheme. I found that before I realized that I needed to tell customers that, they would have greater problems making decisions which boot they want. And what they were doing is flipping through my portfolio and they would think, I love this design, I really like the feathers and the headdress, but I don't like red, so I can't have this boot. By telling them, that there are two elements here, color and design. It frees them up to look at the, the portfolio in a different way. For instance, this particular boot, I had a guy choose this design, but he wanted it in the color scheme from this boot. That's what happened with these boots. This client looked through my portfolio and he found a pair of boots with the design that he loved, and then he chose the color scheme from a different pair of boots. And if you're a boot buyer, I'm hoping that this information will make ordering a pair of bespoke cowboy boots a little less intimidating. There are so many choices that it can be a little overwhelming, but if you just take it in small steps, I like this design, I like these color schemes, I know I want the foot to be this color. Before you know it, you will have designed your very own boot that will make you happy for years to come. This week on In the Studio, I'm going to show you how to trim a side seam. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. You can do it on a sander or you can do it with a knife. I was trained to trim side seams with a knife, but now I do it on a sander. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, as long as you get a nice, smooth side seam. The temptation is to just try doing it like this, flat because you're wanting to take the seam down a little bit and you want it to be flat. But the problem with doing it this way is you're either watching one side or the other. And really bad things can happen to the side that you can't see. So instead we're going to do it from one side. I'm going to trim this side so that I can see it at a slight angle. Then I'm going to turn it over and trim the other side so that I can see it again at a slight angle. And see how I'm leaning my head over to the side so that I can see what I'm trimming. If I were left-handed, I'd probably do it this way. And that's going to leave me with a little ridge right in the middle, which I will take off. First things first, let's start with trimming the edges. allowance was four millimeters. I've always said an eighth of an inch, but actually it's just a hair over an eighth of an inch. Four millimeters is much more accurate. 
I've trimmed it down to about two millimeters. It's difficult to see, but now that I've trimmed both sides, there's a little bump or ridge right in the middle. That ridge is what I'm going to take off now. What I'm doing now is taking out that ridge in the center, just very lightly sanding it to bring it down to those two trimmed edges and make it flat and smooth all the way across that seam. If you don't have a sander, you can use a knife. I prefer to use a lip knife. And of course, if I'm using a lip knife, I prefer to use ones from Terry Nipshield. I like to work on the edge of a table and just gently trim that seam. I'm working very slowly so I can make sure I'm accurate. And my knife is angled slightly because again, I can't see the bottom. I can't see the seam underneath. If I try to hold my knife straight up and down and trim the entire seam at once, more than likely I'm going to get into my stitches on the bottom side because I can't see them. Again, I'm taking off about half of that seam allowance. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And now that I've trimmed both sides, I have that ridge right down the middle again. I'm going to take my knife and just run it right along both trimmed edges. And that will cut that ridge right off. Paige made a really cute pair of shoes, and now she's trimming the lining out. All I have to do after this is just put in the sock liner. I'm going to take these with me to a show and use them for display and try to sell shoes for Paige. So she can't wear them yet. I'm also going to make my mom a pair of loafers that she won't be able to wear either until after the show. Very nice. So can you tell me anything about what inspired this design? Ooh, that's a good question. I always like asymmetrical things, so when I make things for myself, I usually try to do something asymmetrical. And then I had this snake skin. I've had it for a really long time and I haven't really used it yet or had a customer who ordered it so I just decided I'd use it on myself. And I kind of just, I looked through my leather and my mom's leather and the colors came to me and... Her mom's leather. Mostly her mom's leather. The snake skin was mine. <laughs> but yeah, the green and the gold was my mom's. Make what you want and put that in your portfolio and then people see it and order that thing and then you always get to make what you want. Yeah, I'm hoping now people are going to be like, wow, snake skin, beautiful, I want some. And then I'll be able to make more snake skin things.